I'm Patrick Byers, Horticulture Field Specialist with University of Missouri Extension. Fertility management is an important part of success with tomatoes, especially when the crop is grown in a protective structure such as a high tunnel. Certainly information on the uh, soil test and, and the information on rates are helpful, but a very important tool that farmers can use to assess the success of a fertility management program is foliar testing. Foliar testing is a great way to keep a handle on nutritional management in tomatoes. By testing the foliage at various stages during the growth cycle, you can get a feel for the nutrient levels that are within the plant. You can identify trends and you can also find problems before they become problems and address them before they impact productivity. Foliar testing is also a useful way to diagnose problems, and particularly when leaves are exhibiting symptoms that may be the result of a nutritional problem by collecting a sample of healthy leaves and a sample of leaves exhibiting symptoms and comparing the results, this can be a very useful way to identify nutritional issues. There are several growth stages where foliar testing is particularly helpful. As the tomato plant moves from vegetative growth into fruiting growth, this is a good time to get a feel for the nutritional status of the plants. As the first blossoms open, this is a good time to collect foliar samples. Another important time to sample is as the first fruit set begins to enlarge. A third point at which to sample is as the first fruit set begins to ripen. As the crop then commences, it's useful to sample about every two weeks during the remainder of the productive cycle of that tomato planting. When collecting a tomato foliar sample, the goal is to collect leaves that are fully expanded and typically those are the third or fourth leaves down from the growing point. Leaf number one, number two, number three, and number four. And remember when you collect the leaf, it's the entire leaf, it's not these individual leaflets. So when you collect the leaf, this is what the sample will look like. A tomato foliar sample consists of around 20 leaves. Make sure that that sample represents the entire planting. So in other words, you want to collect up and down all of the rows in the high tunnel and make sure that you collect the sample from different cultivars separately. You want to sample cultivars individually. The first step is to label the collection bag. And so this is from the Iker farm. The uh, cultivar is Red Deuce. This is a routine sample. And we are collecting on April 21st, 2021. So 4, 21, 21. Remember that the tomato foliar sample should represent the entire high tunnel. So let's go ahead and collect the sample. Once the foliar sample is collected, the goal is to get it to the analytical laboratory as soon as possible. Hold the sample under refrigeration and then either deliver it or ship it to the lab so that it's in the hands of a lab technician as soon as possible after collection. Now let's take a look at the laboratory report on the tomato foliar sample that was collected earlier in the video. A typical lab report will include several things. The first column lists the elements that were evaluated during the, uh, the uh, laboratory test on the tissue sample. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, iron, manganese, copper, and zinc. The second column is the actual content of the foliar sample for the, the uh, individual nutrients. In the case of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and magnesium, 
This is a percent dry weight of the tissue sample. In the case of iron, manganese, copper, and zinc, this is a parts per million level in the uh, foliar sample. The third column lists what's called the sufficiency range. And the sufficiency range is the range of nutrient content that is considered to be normal to, to, to what would be found in a healthy tissue sample. And sufficiency ranges are arrived at as the result of exhaustive research and also grower experiences across a wide range of growing environments. In other words, a tissue sample from a healthy tomato plant would have nutrients that fall within the sufficiency range. And the final three columns are a graphic illustration comparing the uh, actual content in the foliar sample with the sufficiency range. So let's take a look at what this particular test report is telling us. First of all, nitrogen, 2.36% is definitely below the sufficiency range. And in fact, it's considered to be very low. The other nutrients all fall within the optimum or high levels, and, and this is encouraging. But if we take a look at potassium at 2.99, this is actually on the low end of the optimum range. And this too would be cause for concern because again, one of the benefits of a foliar test is to help us identify trends over time. If this was the first sample of the season, then, then the grower would want to carefully watch the level of uh, potassium moving ahead. Now, how can we uh, uh, use the results of a foliar test in guiding fertility management? Well, in this case, the farmer was using a combination of uh, potassium nitrate and a balanced uh, complete tomato fertilizer to meet uh, fertility needs. And these materials were both injected into the irrigation stream. So the recommendation was, first of all, to increase the rate of potassium nitrate. This would address both the uh, shortage of nitrogen and also what may be uh, an upcoming shortage of potassium. The uh, uh, tomato fertilizer, the, the complete tomato fertilizer also included micronutrients and the recommendation was to increase that rate as well to again hopefully address issues that might be uh, pending or impending in the case of, of iron manganese and zinc for more information on using tomato foliar testing to help evaluate a tomato fertility program reach out to your local county extension office or reach out directly to the University of Missouri Extension field horticulturist that is assigned to your county. This map shows the territories of the uh, horticulture field specialists across Missouri. Find your county and identify the specialist. If your county has an open horticulture position, then reach out to the closest specialist. I'm sure they'll be happy to help. Mm -hmm.